so question number 1 we have got here is a 28 year old gentleman who presents with bone pains for 2 to 3 years his vitamin d levels are consistently low so bone pains can be a feature of osteomalacia which is adult form of vitamin d3 deficiency patient also gives history of frequent micturition and urine analysis shows 3 plus glucose even though glyco hb was normal so the patient is having glycosuria the patient is having without having diabetes abg shows metabolic acidosis with high urinary anion gap so this is typical of renal tubular acidosis so diagnostic of renal tubular acidosis which has got multiple types there is type 1 2 3 and 4 so among the 1 2 3 and 4 the one which has having osteomalacia and glycosuria as a part of fanconi syndrome is the proximal rta is the proximal rta so correct answer is answer number d so please remember fanconi triad okay expected question fanconi triad is a triad of glycosuria there is amino acid urea and there is phosphate urea amino acid urea and the phosphate urea these will be your important question here going number 2 a 28 year old gentleman presents with postural hypotension that means the patient is having dehydration we can make out postural hypotension is a of our dehydration early feature of dehydration there is also history of recurrent loin pain with episodes of hematuria and the patient has nephrocalcinosis so nephrocalcinosis is present abg shows metabolic alkalosis alkalosis with high urinary chloride level so this is suggesting the patient is having a channelopathy so inherited channelopathy which is associated with dehydration and the nephrocalcinosis is the bart <coughs> barter syndrome is the barter syndrome question number 3 the following syndromes are associated with metabolic alkalosis so typically all the inherited channelopathies are associated with metabolic alkalosis exception is one except jordan syndrome because jordan syndrome is like the opposite of gitelman syndrome it is the opposite of gitelman syndrome the jordan syndrome is autosomal dominant stimulatory defect stimulatory defect of the sodium chloride cotransporter sodium chloride cotransporter and hence presents with hyperkalemic acidosis presents with hyperkalemic acidosis okay odd man out is jordan's syndrome question number 4 match the following simple one osteitis cystica fibrosa the most common bone disease in ckd is due to secondary hyperparathyroidism so a4 a dynamic bone disease is a remodeling defect of the bone osteomalacia as we discussed in the first question is the adult form of vitamin d3 deficiency and rickets occurs in acidemia of type 1 rta which typically affects young age that is why it can lead to rickets so that is our typical uh, mcq at most of the different bone disorders in renal disease this is your correct answer question number 5 which of the following is a criteria for diagnosis of aki presently we use kdigo criteria for diagnosis of aki which includes urine output criteria and rise in the serum creatinine criteria are included for diagnosis of the disease among the criteria the given options correct option is option number c so urine output less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour 
for more than equal to six consecutive hours is one of the criteria. So we can say that minimum duration for us to label the patient as acute kidney disease is six hours. Indirect MCQ minimum duration for diagnosis of AKI is six hours. Question number six. A 30 year old male presented with hemoptysis and RPGN. So patient is having lung pulmonary renal syndrome. Pulmonary renal syndrome. He is a smoker and does not give history of previous similar episode. Renal biopsy shows linear immunoglobulin deposit which is diagnostic of good pasture syndrome. Diagnostic of good pastures syndrome. So pulmonary renal syndrome. The classical is good pasture syndrome. While the differential diagnosis will include ANCA positive vasculitis syndrome and henox lawn purpura. The classical one is the good pasture syndrome. Pulmonary renal syndrome. In pulmonary renal good pasture syndrome alveolar hemorrhage is unrelated to smoking. Is it a true statement? No. There is increased risk is related. It is higher among smokers. So it is not a true statement. What we want is a true statement. So this is false. Plasma ferrous is not indicated. False. It is indicated because 90% risk of RPGN is there. So plasma ferrous is indicated. Serology shows ANCA is false. You get anti-GBM antibody. Prognosis is poor due to acute mortality. True statement and the correct answer in this question. Number 7. A 50 year old male presented with recurrent painful oral and genital ulcers. Patient also has foreign body sensation in the eyes and notice blurring of the vision. So what are we typically taking of Bechet's disease? And the dreaded complication prevented by early suppression is blindness. Because this foreign body sensation is basically due to development of hypopion, uveitis, hypopion, which can lead to blindness if it is not treated early. Question number 8. A 30 year old male presented with Reynolds phenomena and hematuria. Patient also had asymmetrical neuropathy and patient is hepatitis B positive. Renal angiography shows microaneurysm at the bifurcation. That's a clincher. Diagnosis is polyarteritis nodosa. Please remember the other name. Systemic necrotizing vasculitis. Systemic necrotizing vasculitis. Don't forget and miss out on this common MC. Question number 9. The Tiffany Pinelli index. Less than 0 0.70 is diagnostic of which lung disease? Obstructive lung disease. So what is this ratio? FVC upon FPV1 or FPV1 upon FVC. FPV1 upon FVC ratio. FPV1 upon FVC ratio. On the spirometry. It is very very important. It is the most accurate. Most accurate. An important parameter on the spirometry. Important parameter on the spirometry. And if it is low, it is diagnostic of obstructive lung disease. Diagnostic of obstructive lung disease. In restrictive, it can be normal or elevated. In isolated diff diffusion, it is always normal. Okay, important for... Question number 10. Which of the following statements regarding respiratory alkalosis are true? That is CO2 washout. CO2 washout are true. Exception. We want, we want the false statement. Reduced cerebral blood flow can occur due to reduced PaCO2. True statement. Salicylates are most common cause of drug induced. True statement. Most common acid based effect in critically ill. True statement. Increased progesterone during pregnancy prevents respiratory alkalosis. False. Rather increases the risk of respiratory alkalosis during pregnancy. True statement. Nahi hai. Ye false statement. Hai. Making it the 
correct answer. False statement, correct answer. We are not. Please remember, respiratory alkalosis is the most common acid-base balance defect in pregnancy. Most common acid-base balance defect in pregnancy because of increased progesterone level. Question number 11. A 22-year-old man developed painful swelling of his left knee and gives history of diarrhea three weeks back, which resolved in three days. Testing for gonorrhea is negative. Reactive arthritis is suspected, which is true about the condition. So typically, reactive arthritis is associated with chlamydia. But here when they say diarrhea, most common culprit is salmonella. Most common culprit is salmonella preceding diarrhea. So intestinal infection is amoeba? No, not true. High prevalence of DQ? No, HLA B27. It is a part of spondyloarthropathy. Part of spondyloarthropathy. Is it more common in women than children? Answer, no. It has equal distribution among both the genders. But yes, synovial fluid shows elevated leukocyte count in the absence of infection in the absence of infection culture is negative but this is typical of the reactive arthritis typical of reactive arthritis question number 12 a 33 year old woman is seen in your office please remember female gender patient has fatigue malaise right upper quadrant discomfort for one month she is notable for past history hypothyroidism, result mildly tender, hepatomegaly, no risk factor for viral hepatitis, does not consume alcohol or illicit drugs. So typically when you get a hepatomegaly, when you get hepatomegaly and features of hepatic dysfunction, main causes of hepatic dysfunction, we are looking at main causes of hepatic dysfunction. We are mainly looking at alcohol. So alcohol and viral hepatitis are typically common in the males. While in female, you are looking at autoimmune hepatitis. You are looking at the autoimmune hepatitis. Especially because mother has got history of lupus. Maternal aunt has rheumatoid arthritis. Laboratory tests are notable. ALT is elevated, AST is elevated, bilirubin is normal, albumin is normal. So it's not a chronic problem. Thyroid is also well controlled. But patient has got anti-smooth muscle, antibody positive. So we are dealing with a autoimmune hepatitis. We are dealing with a autoimmune hepatitis. This needs to be treated with immunosuppression. This needs to be treated with Immunosuppression. Let us look at the choice. So what would be is more common in men? No, autoimmune hepatitis is more common in female. Treatment of choice is prednisolone. True statement. Low risk of developing or moderate risk. Does not recur, can recur. So the correct answer is prednisolone with 